All right, so let's find our center. So we have this outlet set so that right from the edge of this would be 23 inches to the mirror. And then the mirror is 26 inches. So that gives us 13 to the center. So just measuring off our wall, we're 21 and a quarter. So that's where we want to have our vanity, which is right in line with our plumbing. Now I did want to set this at a normal height. That's why we raised the plumbing. Right now we have like 35 inches. So by the time I get the top on, it'll be about 36 inches. Now this vanity was pretty cool because it came with some metal brackets that I can stick into place and just slide it in, which makes it really nice. Having some brackets like this is much better than just relying on the wood that you basically set it on. So let's just double check to see how our plumbing is gonna work here. I mean, that should work just fine. We're a little bit off to the corner there, but that'll be totally sufficient. So we'll get our water supplies on. The other thing I wanted to do was get my outlet in for the under cabinet lighting. So if we can go somewhere in line with here, like somewhere right around here, let's put a mark on the wall and see if that's gonna work. We had a basically a stud right here. That's what we mounted our drywall onto. So, so if we just put that outlet right in line with that, we should be good. And we can be able to That was from that. Yeah, so that we don't need anymore. Right. Have these little tabs that flip up and then just basically pinches it right to the drywall. So they're pretty nice, great for adding on things like this. Now we're just gonna put a regular outlet and this will be switch controlled from our light switches. Okay, so these little Z brackets basically hold right underneath the back of the cabinet. So let's just try to determine how far down from the top of where we want our set our top to the back of this is. So looking at this, we're about six and five sixteenths. And we're just gonna put them basically kind of even right in here in the middle, seven inches. So six and five sixteenths. Okay, so since this is gonna be in the vanity, I don't really have to be overly concerned about the look. So I can just use some PEX angle stops. What the hell? That's not gonna let me crimp it. That's a stupid design. I got this little thing that's holding me because of this supply valve. Get your old school crimper. That's side. stupid. Yeah, the problem was the way it's designed, they got that little bump out right there. And that, I, this is way down here, so you're able to get tight to a fitting like this. That's definitely a downside to eye crimp on that one. Um, it's rigid. I bought them. Long time ago. Yeah, long time, long, long time ago. I probably had that for 15 years. Double check things. That could be pushed back. Footage? No, I don't want that footage. Yeah, let's just end it here. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and set our vanity. Make sure 
it stays low. Yeah, that's pretty good. It'd be pretty level this way. So we'll get our under cabinet lighting in first before uh, putting the top on. All right, so I got this little kit. It actually comes with a switch. So this is like, you know, if you wanted to have a switch on your, I mean, you wouldn't be able to really use it function it right here in this situation, but this is more for like real under cabinet lighting in your kitchen. And you could just, but we're not gonna be using the switch since we're gonna have a switch on the wall. But these little LED strips, it's amazing how inexpensive they became. They're 16 foot long and uh, it was like $17. So as you can see, I have the plug outlet here and then this is just gonna plug right into our LED strip. So it, things have gotten a lot more affordable these days with this stuff, it's unbelievable. This used to be like a real high dollar ticket item to add to your cabinetry back in the day. And now it really, I mean, 20 bucks, my goodness. So basically, this is 16 foot. We obviously only need 28 inches. Um, but if you just cut this anywhere in between these little copper strips, you know, you're, you're going to be good to go. So let's go ahead and um, drill out the corner of this cabinet. And basically, we're just going to fish it up to be able to plug in our adapter. I would recommend putting a little bit of silicone in this hole. Keep that wire from moving out of here. So just glue that in. Now just plug this in. All right, so before I put the sink top on and potentially scratch it, <laughs> install this medicine cabinet. And then I, I am gonna make a little bit of a mess getting the, the light sconces in. So. Let's establish where we wanted this. Yeah. Good height? Yeah, I think that's a good height. Of our outlet. Cause we're gonna, this is really cumbersome to do by yourself. So I'm gonna basically uh, put some screws in the hold. So we're gonna be 13 at the bottom. So that's our top. This much, I'm gonna take. Yeah, I was gonna say, you should take the gear down. Okay, so we're gonna use these Wago levers. It really makes the easiest connection here. So, the only thing you wanna really pay attention to here is whether you can see the copper on the other side of the lever. Pull on these, make sure that they're well connected, but this is really simplifies the installation. And what I'm gonna be using, this is like a data entry cable outlet. So I'm just gonna fish this wire right through here. That's the only thing I could think that would make a lot of sense to make this connection. Cause you need to have access to this connection. You can't just bury it in the wall. But these are great for stranded wires. Again, just pull on them, make sure that they're connected well. And that really makes it easy to do. And then we'll, we'll stuff this wire into the box once we get to that. And then this just has a little cover plate that allows you to connect this to. I 
All right, that's about as best as I can think to make this look. It's kind of a little weird of a scenario with it coming out of the box like that, but that'll work. Do you want them in line with this? Or do you want them out right here? Yeah. Okay, so five, five and an eighth. Feed this wire over to this one. We should be able to find, here's our wire to our switch. Just slightly up. Yeah, I yeah, it does look pretty even. Yeah. Mirror. Cool. <laughs> Very neat. All right, so that's the power for that. I think we're just gonna do the top switch. The other side, we're gonna put the under cabinet lighting. So don't underestimate what it takes to actually wire all of this together. If you're getting all these types of different things into this electrical box, it's definitely going to take some time. It basically took me the whole day just to get this mirror set up, my overhead lighting, the switches and the thermostat. I still don't have my plumbing connected yet, but uh, we'll get that done tomorrow. So be patient and make sure that you charge enough to be able to a lot an entire day getting all these things out because a lot of this is just around a matter of fussing around and coordinating with the customer and making sure that they're happy with how you're setting things so we'll move on to the next and but it's really coming turning out beautifully absolutely love the under cabinet lighting i think that's a really awesome touch to the whole thing and just having a you know some a timer switch for the fan will keep the ventilation in here as well all right, so it is so much easier on a new install to set the faucet first and then put in your sink top. We're going to be installing a Kohler Sterling uh, sink faucet. And what's great about this, I just love how the new faucets all kind of are like this, but that they already have the supply lines already connected. It, this is a really nice solid unit, by the way. I mean, it's all brass, all metal, really well made. Uh, so pay attention to the type of faucet you're going to be installing. This is obviously just like one whole application here, but if you had a, uh, a four inch center, it does come with a little item that will cover three different holes. So you do have that ability. We're not going to use that because we don't have to on this one, but it's a very simple, basic installation. You simply just uh, take your little washer that comes with this part and then you have your two brackets so just set this into place and then I absolutely love these type of pop-up drains because you can pull it out so this just pops in and out but it's just kind of more of like a friction installation so if you ever got hair in it you can pull it out clean it off and put it back into place. So that really makes it simple. The other thing about it is that it has a little rubber gasket so you don't have to use any type of silicone. You just use the little rubber gasket to seal it. So make sure your beveled edge is pointing up. And that's really all there is to it. Just hand tighten that, you're good to go. Doesn't get much more simple than that. And again, you don't have to use any type of silicone. Everything's sealed with that rubber gasket, you're ready to go. Pretty cool. Yep, that'll work. This 
section needs to cut down a little bit. Okay. So one important thing here is that you don't want that entire trap arm going all the way in. So just mark it. So you don't want to have that much going in there. You only need a couple inches going into the tube because one thing is if, if you keep it going all the way in there, it'll be right up against the T and you can cause clogs. So make sure you cut this back a little bit. But really, we're just gonna adhere this onto this cabinet with some clear silicone, and that's what's gonna mount the sink to the top here. So now we can just easily connect our trap. So make sure you test everything and release the water. Make sure you don't have any leaks. Everything looks good. Very easy installation. Okay. All right, so that's it. Well, you know what? We'll go, we'll go ahead and caulk the back of this. That's always an area that gets kind of crummy. All right, so this might be the scariest caulking joint of the whole bathroom because you're going to look at it every time that you use the sink and this is a problematic area where grime and things can get so i really am a big fan even though it says window and door caulking this is a polyurethane sealant this osi quad max it's a very thick consistency and since it's a poly type of sealant it's going to in some ways be better than silicone so i've been a big fan of this i've been using it for a lot of things like this but you have to be accurate with the amount that you put on and then how you tow it afterwards. Make sure that our tip is cut nice and clean. That's about a 3 16th inch gap. And we're gonna to try to be as steady as possible coming across the back here. So this right here, this is a little bit too thick of material. I'm not getting a good thrust on this. So this gun is gonna give me a little bit more pressure. This is a 12 to one thrust ratio. I'm just not getting quite enough thrust out of that. There we go, that's a lot more. I could be a lot more st steady with a caulking gun that has the right thrust ratio. Well, we'll just wipe that off afterwards. But I'm gonna use a little bit of caulk ease And then this little caulking tool has a whole bunch of different blades on it. We're gonna go with the smallest one. And this is paintable stuff, by the way. So this is what's kind of nicer than the other stuff. If I need to touch something up, I can touch something up later on. <laughs> well, like I said, it's paintable. <laughs> Not a big deal. Let me just uh, finish this off. All right, we can touch that up. That's one thing about this. So I give myself a C on that one. But I do like the caulking joint. It does look pretty, pretty nice and even there. I'm just gonna touch that up with paint once that dries and we'll be good to go. But can't win them all, but, <laughs> but this does work pretty well. This does smooth it out pretty nicely. So 